The main motivation behind my kits is to create tools that I want to use personally. And the Instant Lighting Kit is a perfect example of this because I often need to create images really quickly. So when I've created an asset for a tutorial, for example, I need to be able to create a really nice looking render of that asset as fast as possible. Because I want to devote more of my time on creating the actual training rather than on creating marketing materials. And that's why I created the Instant Lighting Kit, because it allows me to create beautiful renders in no time at all. So by way of example, I'm just using a Modo preset here, but let's imagine that you've just created this asset and you want to quickly produce a couple of nice looking renders of it. Well, I'll switch to a camera view. So we've got a camera set up, but everything else in the scene is at default settings. So let's just quickly launch a preview render to see what it looks like. And obviously it looks pretty basic. So let's return to the OpenGL view. And I'll start just by disabling the default lighting in the scene because we don't want that. And I'm going to come over to the kits button and let's click on it to open my third party kits. And the instant lighting kit can be found under this icon here. Now there's two versions of the instant lighting kit. There's the original instant lighting kit and there's also a sequel instant lighting kit too. So you might be wondering what's the difference between the two kits? Well, essentially they're complementary to each other. In the original Instant Lighting Kit, there's 36 separate environments. And in Instant Lighting Kit 2, there's another 36 environments. So basically, if you have the two kits together, you have twice as many options because you have 64 environments. So I'm going to start by adding a sweep to the scene. And these are found in the original Instant Lighting Kit. So let's add a five meter sweep. And then I'm going to switch to a camera view just to see what things look like. And let's just change the camera angle, swing around to something a little bit like this. Then I'll select my asset and I'm just going to rotate that round. So it's just facing the other way just to create a nice looking shot. And let's reframe the shot slightly to something like this. Then I'll return to the regular OpenGL view and let's add an environment from the Instant Lighting Kit. So in this case, I'm going to go to Instant Lighting 2 and I'm going to double click on the interiors. And once they're loaded, I'm simply going to dismiss the kit's popover. Then I'm going to open a preview window on the left hand side here and let's click on the triangle to run it. Take a look at the results. And you can see in this case, the Instant Lighting Kit is really living up to its name because straight away we've got really nice looking render. I'm just going to reframe the view slightly here in preview just to get a better camera angle. But of course, I don't have to settle for the first option that I see here. So I'm going to click on the environment controls and just start playing with the options. And the first thing I'm going to do is simply to rotate the environment that's already loaded. So let's just play around. You can see as I do that, the lighting changes quite dramatically. And because I'd like to try a few different ideas, I'm going to use render passes just to save a few different options so I can compare them later. So to begin with, I'm just going to collapse this panel on the side and I'm going to open this panel on the other side. That's going to reveal all the panels I need for my render passes. So I'm going to create a new pass group. Let's call it lighting. Click OK. And then I'm going to create a new pass. Let's just call it pass one. And then I'm going to enable auto add and I'm just going to quickly fiddle with all the controls just so that it records the changes I make. And that means it's going to store the state that I want in the actual render pass. So let's also play with the brightness. And then once I'm happy with everything, I'm going to hit apply. And now I'm going to create another pass. Let's call this one pass two. And we can carry on experimenting with the lighting and store those results in this pass. So I'm going to quickly just change my environment. Let's select a completely different one. And this also looks quite nice. So I'm going to store that in my pass. Let's hit apply. Then I'll create a third render pass. Click OK. And let's just move the environment selector to a different value and just start playing around with the options that I have. Now that looks quite nice, but I think it's a bit too blue. So I'm just going to reduce the overall saturation to something a bit more subtle and maybe also increase the brightness to create a slightly more high key image. Once I'm happy, I hit apply and let's create one more pass and let's try a completely different environment this time. And I think that looks pretty nice. So once again, I'm going to hit apply and I can now dismiss my controls for my instant lighting kit. And I'm also going to collapse the preview on this side. And let's just open a bigger preview here 
in the main window. And if I now cycle through my saved render passes, I can compare the four options that I've saved as being interesting. And as you can see in no time at all, I've created some really, really nice lighting to show off this asset. And the other benefit, of course, is that I get to see how the shaders react under different lighting conditions and so on. This is really useful for me personally, because it means that I can create nice looking renders really, really quickly, which then allows me to spend more time doing other things. And of course, we're really only just scratching the surface of what the kit can do here because this is just four environments out of a total of 64. So as you can imagine, the permutations are more or less endless. So if you're not familiar with the Instant Lighting Kit, I hope this video has helped to show you how it might help you in your own workflow in the same way that it helps me in mine.